His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, accompanied by his son, Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa, visited yesterday evening the majlises of Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Ahmed Mansour Al Ali, sons of the late Haji Hassan Al Ali, and Minister of Follow Up Affairs Mohammed Al Mutawa. His Royal Highness said that under the leadership of His Majesty the King, Bahrain continues to strengthen the principles of unity among Bahrain's citizens. He added that the strong bonds that exist within Bahrain help to protect the kingdom from threat of extremist ideologies, which seek to undermine regional security. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince reaffirmed that Bahrain's security will be protected at all times and highlighted the ongoing collaboration between security institutions in order to maintain security and stability across the kingdom. He highlighted that the holy month of Ramadan offers a unique opportunity to reflect on Islamic values, which underpin and promote peace and tolerance. The hosts and guests of the Majlises expressed their gratitude for His Royal Highness's visit and highlighted His Royal Highness's ongoing and wide-ranging engagement with Bahrain citizens and families.
The Deputy Premier Head of the Ministerial Committee for Control of Financial Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, affirmed that the government is keen to translate what has been agreed upon between the legislative and executive authority in terms of the government work and state budget for 2015 to 2016. And this, he added, will be in line with the leadership's vision and citizens' aspirations. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah lauded the positive comp cooperation received from the chairman of the representative and shura councils, as well as its members, while discussing details of the state budget with government representatives. This, he said, reflects the sense of responsibility shouldered by them towards an important national affairs issue, namely the budget. He highlighted the agreement reached on enhancing the state financial position by embarking on measures such as reducing deficits, improving non-oil income, and reviewing government subsidies for food. This is in addition to improving the national economy and encouraging investment. The Deputy Premier highlighted that the nation under the leadership of His Majesty the King, the government of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier, will spare no efforts in maintaining its citizens' interests through providing them with essential needs, including education, health, and improving citizens' living standards. The Deputy Premier went on to say that decisions made were a collective one and in line with the state law and constitution, the basis of which was laid by His Majesty the King. He highlighted that the responsibility is a shared one and should be shouldered by all those concerned in order to enhance the financial position of the kingdom. He went further to say that the concept of consultation and cooperation between the relevant authorities is something that is emphasized by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for the purpose of developing the economy as well as improving the living and social standards of citizens. The Minister of Justice and Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, confirmed that the ministry will take legal actions against anyone who incites hatred and attempts to break the national and Islamic unity. He said that the ministry is coordinating with specialists and relevant authorities to monitor the activities in the houses of worship. Sheikh Khalid bin Ali pointed out that the serious events in the region require responsibility in order to reserve unifying speech. The minister also warned about the terrorist groups who attempt to break stability and unity thwart the country's achievements and incite sectarianism for their deviant goals. The representative for Charity and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, delegated the Minister of Youth and Sports, Hisham bin Hamad Al Jodar, to honor the volleyball competition winners as part of the first Nasser bin Hamad Ramadan Sports Games and eight Ramadan Football Championships, Nasser 8. A Maharak team was able to achieve the winning title in the competition. His Highness affirmed that the success of the competition and its remarkable organizational and technical form is due to the continuous success of sport game competitions, especially after the handball competition. His Highness pointed out that the collective work of the organizing committee and the sports federation were the basis for the success of the competition. He praised the Maharaq team lauding the high competitive spirit and morale that dominated the competition. His Highness expressed his gratitude to the local mass media and sponsors that contributed to this success, stressing the importance of the continuous cooperation in these competitions to achieve its youth and sports goals in the kingdom. Under the auspices of the Chairman of the Board of the Royal Charity Organization, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Charity Organization held its annual iftar banquet for the staff of the organization. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad valued the role of the Honorary President of the organization, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, for his fatherly care for the orphans of the kingdom and His Majesty's keen desire to follow up on the work of the Royal Charity Organization, including providing the necessary care and services. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the staff of the Royal Charity Organization are demonstrating hard work and dedication in order to achieve the vision of His Majesty the King and providing the best care and services for the beneficiaries. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised, rather pa passed a message across to the staff of the organization, wishing them a happy Ramadan and directing them to utilize their time seeking knowledge and work hard under the wise leadership of His Majesty the King, the wise government of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Premier. The Secretary General of the Royal Charity Organization, Dr. Mustafa Sayed, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad for attending the iftar, which he said reflects the care and keenness of His Highness towards the Royal Organization and its staff. 
He vowed to work hard with the staff in order to achieve the vision of His Majesty the King and the directors of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad. A number of supporters of the organization and Friends of Orphans were honored during the ceremony. The International Peace Institute, Middle East and North Africa hosted today a gathering for religious leaders representing different faiths of the world with the aim of consolidating their stand against acts of terrorism perpetrated in the name of religion. More in this report with Fatma Al-Bestegi. With a prayer from different religions around the world in respect to those who were killed or injured in the different attacks around the world, the International Peace Institute hosted a gathering of different religious figures and leaders in the kingdom who came together during the holy month of Ramadan. First, the fact to uh, gather all these uh, leaders of different faiths, religions and communities in this very challenging context is an achievement in itself. Let alone when they get out of this meeting adopting a forward-looking resolution that recommends concrete steps to tackle terrorism in the name of religion. We adopted today as the Manama call. Manama has become the destination of peacemakers and we will work on making of it the source of the message of peace and hope. The religious leaders called to foster mutual respect, tolerance, dialogue and cultural peace within the community and between the youth and emphasized the important role played by educators and community leaders to promote such collective beliefs. We are here to, to tell people in Bahrain, in the area, in all the world, Bahrain is the land of peace and we are here to show all the people around the world, these people from all the world, from all the religion, uh, uh, to come together to show the peace in Bahrain. After the very good uh, meeting today, the outcome which I see is very healthy. All the faiths together working in the same direction for the peace, for the love and affection in entire mankind that is the human beings. Despite the challenging circumstances in the world, a flare of hope, peace and unity continues to shine and the Kingdom of Bahrain rejects once again any violence under the name of religion and remains a destination for harmony, peace and unity. Today, different religious leaders have gathered here to prove that in challenging situations, unity and peace are key players. Reporting for Bahrain Television News Center, this is Fatma Bestigi. Teaching Americans young and old about the customs of Bahrain and its predominantly Muslim population is a priority at the Washington Embassy of Bahrain, where they recently held an iftar for students. Our Washington reporter Marty Johnson was there and filed this report. Dusk was coming on as the embassy started to fill with young people, students attending a cultural iftar, led by Mubarak Boudi, head of the embassy's cultural and educational office. Because some of them, they have never, never had the chance to experience Ramadan. They have never had the chance to attend or to come to one of the embassies, uh, especially to one of the Middle Eastern embassies. Uh, beside this, uh, they lack the knowledge uh, or the information about the holy month of Ramadan and the kind of traditions and the kind of practices we do. There was a brief presentation on Bahrain's history and culture, along with an explanation of Ramadan traditions. Providing a bit of color, embassy staffer Madison Clough, who though she is not Muslim, is fasting with her colleagues simply want to encourage everyone to simply give it a try for a month that whether you're Christian, Jewish or Muslim it's important to try to share in the holiday and to share in the blessed spirit of the holy month of Ramadan. A little after 8.30 each participant enjoyed dates followed by prayers. There are two different groups of students here for the embassy's cultural iftar. 20 of them came from the Washington Center. Those are students gathered from all over the United States. Another 10 are from Georgetown University, which is here in the district. All of them got an eyeful and a mouthful of Bahrain. Which, yes, every student mentioned when asked what they liked. But what did they learn? 
different countries celebrate Ramadan a little bit differently. They all have very sim they're very similar, but they all have different uh, aspects of uh, their culture that they like to show in their food um, and some of their traditions that they they do to celebrate Ramadan and breaking the fast and such. Specifically, the certain foods and how like they begin fasting, that's actually pretty interesting to me. Um, I didn't know that it was comprised of 33 islands. Little facts like that. I enjoyed getting to practice my, my Arabic a little bit. I study Arabic, so it was cool to get to practice with some native speakers and get to know a little more about their culture. So what do you want to say to people in Bahrain in Arabic? Bahrain in Arabic. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Ramadan Karim. A worthy message to send back to the country that gave him an evening of Ramadan delights. Reporting for Bahrain TV, I'm Marty Johnson, Washington.